Let's talk about the basic concept of probability. Right off the bat, I would like to start with a few probability statements. The first one, you say these kind of things a lot, but you just don't realize that you are using probabilities. So let's say um, I am a math major. Before I take a math test, I say the probability that I get a perfect score is 70%. So I am a math major. I am always good at math. Bef before I take a test, I will tell my friend, hey, I am very good at this. I am very confident the probability I will get a perfect score on this test is 70%. So sometimes maybe you are even smarter. You can say, I am very smart. I am the top 1% in this class. The probability I will get a perfect score on this test is 95% or 90%. All right, so the first type, the one that I just said, I make that statement based on my intuition. I am a math major. The probability that I will get a perfect score on any math test is 90%, 95%, or even 99%. So that means I am super confident. So this type of, uh, this is a one of the types of uh, probability statements. It's based on your intuition, based on your historical performance. You know how good you are, so you make a statement. All right, and then the next type is based on uh equally likely outcomes so equally likely outcomes so do you see there are two pictures on the right so the first one is a die the second one is a coin right so let's say i roll a die so a die has six faces right so this die has six faces what kind of numbers do you get every time you roll a die so you get a one two three four five six there are six faces what is the probability that you get either one of these faces? so every time you roll a die you get one number right so the probability is what is that equal to that is equals to one over six right so actually the probability to get any of these numbers is one over six how about a coin so a coin is either face up or face down right so people don't use the word face up and face down they use the word head so this is head and the other side is a tail. So you flip a coin. What is the probability that you will get a head? The probability that you will get a head is one half. The probability that you will get a tail is also one half. It's either one side or the other, right? People say it's 50-50 or 50% chance. So this is also based on equally likely outcome. The probability to get a head is equal to the probability of getting a tail. Back to the previous uh, example, uh, six fate, a six-sided die, the probability to get a number between one and six, including one, including six, is one over six. And let me give you one more example. So you do multiple choice, right? You know what a multiple choice problem looks like. So you get a A, B, C, and D, right? So let's say you have no idea which answer is right. You pick one randomly. What is the probability that you get the problem right by chance? So A, B, C, D, either one of the answer is right. You just don't know which one. You pick one randomly. What's the probability that you get um, the answer right the probability that you will get the answer correct is one over four so that means there is one right answer out of four choices the probability that you will get the problem wrong is three over four all right so this is probability statement so what is probability exactly so let me um give you a definition so probability so is basically a likelihood so this probability is basically a likelihood So probability is a numerical measure between zero and one that describes the likelihood that an event will occur. So let me draw the probability right here. So I'm going to say probability. Is a likelihood between zero and one, including zero and including one. Zero represents zero percent and one represent a hundred percent. So this is also called likelihood. Or chance. Probability closer to one indicate that the event is more likely to occur. 
closer to zero indicate the event is like less likely to occur. Let's draw a scale. So I'm going to draw a straight line. And then uh, on the left end, I have a zero percent. On the right end, I have a hundred percent. So let's cut this line into two pieces. So in the middle, then I have a 50 percent, right? So this is zero percent means zero, 50 percent means 0.5, and then a hundred percent means one. You cannot go over above one and you cannot go below zero probability can never be negative and then from zero to five i can cut this into a half from five to point five to one i can cut this into a half so this is a point two five this is a point seventy five if a probability is closer to a zero closer to zero right here that means the event is impossible to occur let's say you are taking a statistic class the probability that you will pass this class is zero what does that mean? That means there is no way that you will pass this class if the probability is zero. You don't want that to happen, right? What if the probability that you will pass this statistic class is one? What does that mean? That means you are guaranteed passing this class. You got everything right. So after I input your score to a gradebook, the probability that you will pass this class is 100%. So one is certain certain to occur and then 0.5 is called an even chance closer to one or closer to 100 percent you have a higher chance closer to zero means it's almost impossible to happen so you you didn't study for a test what is the probability that you pass the test is almost zero right so zero means there is no way that you will pass you study a lot you are well prepared what is the probability that you will pass this test is closer to one maybe 95 percent or 90 percent is close to one that means you have a very good chance to pass so that's how the probability works it's always between zero and one you cannot go above a hundred percent you cannot go below zero percent no negative right first of all no negative right it, it's always between zero and one or zero percent and a hundred percent including the zero including the one there is no 101 percent or 105 percent or 200 percent those numbers they are not probabilities all right and then how do you write a probability notation so this is how we write it i'm going to change to another color so let's say um i have an um event i just call it an a a can be anything you can name what, what whatever you want so let's say uh let's don't don't, don't use a maybe uh that is not too meaningful to you so let's take Take this back. So let's say the probability you flip a coin. So the outcome is either a head or a tail, right? You flip a coin, you either get one side or the other. So you either get a head or you get a tail. So let's say I want the event to be a head. So head, I'm going to write the word head. What is the probability that you will get a head? So you, this is a math class, right? You don't say the probability that I will get a head. You don't write the words out. So in math, there is always a notation. So since probability is a word that starts with a P, so for probability, I will use the letter P. So this P parenthesis head means the probability of head. What is the probability to get a head? Is one half. What is the probability that you will get a tail that is also one half? Right? So let's say you roll a die, the probability that you will get a one is one over six. The probability that you will get a two is one over six. The probability that you get any number between one and six, including one and six, they are always one over six. So let's say you're taking a test. What is the probability that you will pass this test? You are well prepared. The probability that you will pass this test, let's say, is 80%, then you say that it's equal to 0 0.8, or you say that it's 80%. So that is how we use the probability notation. The P stands for probability. So you don't need to write a sentence. The probability of something, something is equal to. You write P of the name of the event. All right? So that's the probability notation. And then uh, there are three types of probability assignments. So three types. So let me use this example to explain the three types. I'm going to change color. So there are three types of probability assignment. The first type is based on intuition. Based on your historical uh performance or based on how good you are with something you give me 
uh, probability based on your intuition. So probability is just a likelihood. And then type two is based on relative frequency. Relative frequency is the frequency of that event divided by the total frequency. And then the type three, which is was like a multiple choice test. So you have A, B, C, D, right? So every, the probability of getting an A is one fourth, right? So the third type is a equally likely outcome. Maybe using the word multiple choice problem is not a um, appropriate word. So let's say um, I have an envelope, right? I have an envelope. I have four cards. The first card, I have an A written on it. The second card is B. The third card is C. And then the last card is D. So I have four cards. I place these four cards inside an envelope. And then I ask you to pick a card out. So what is the probability that you will get an A? The probability that you will get an A is one over four. So there are four cards in an envelope. You don't know which one is which. You reach your hand inside the envelope. You pick one out. The probability that you will get any cards in there is one over four. So that is equally likely outcomes. So let's take a look at this uh, probability uh, assignment example. So consider each of the following events and determine how the probability is assigned. So number one, a teenager claims that she has 80% chance of passing a behind the wheel driving exam. So what type of probability is that? That is based on her intuition, right? So that is based on her intuition. Number two, in a true or false question, you have 50% chance to answer the question correctly by guessing. Is true or false? You don't know which one is right. You don't know which one is wrong. So you pick one. The chance that you will get it right is one half, right? So one half. This is an equally likely outcome. So that would be um, number, number three. So equally likely outcome. And then number three, a box has 10 marbles. Oh, I will just draw, draw a picture. So let's say this is a box. There are four blue and then five yellow and then one red. So four plus five plus one is equals to 10. And then you select one marble randomly, find the probability of selecting a blue marble. So this one, what is the total? The total frequency is 10 because there are 10 balls in this box. And then the frequency of blue, what's the frequency of blue? The frequency of blue is four, right? So that is based on relative frequency. So number three, this mob, this uh, marble problem is based on relative frequency. So what is the probability of getting a red marble? So that will be one divided by 10. What is the probability to get a blue, not, not a blue, a yellow marble. So that will be five over 10. So you take the frequency of blue divided by total frequency. So that's how uh, this problem works. And then uh, the next one is law of large numbers. So in, a, in the long run, the sam as the sample size increases and increases, the relative frequency of outcomes gets closer and closer to the theoretical or actual probability. So uh, let's use the easiest example ever. So let's say um, we flip a coin. So the probability to get a head is one half. The probability to get a tail is also one half, right? So it's 50%, 50%, 50-50. We call this 50-50, right? Okay, now, based on this 50-50, I am going to ask you questions. So let's say I flip a coin 10 times. So let's say N equals to 10. You flip a coin 10 times. Perhaps you can pa pause the video and then do that right now. You flip a coin 10 times. Pick up any coin, flip the coin 10 times. All right, you said 50-50, right? Is that means I will get five head and five tail every single time. So right now, I flip a coin 10 times. I expect to get exactly five head and exactly five tail. Are you able to do this every single time? Think about it. Or if you don't want to think, do it. Flip a coin 10 times. Can you get exactly five heads and exactly five tails? You can pause the video and do it right now. Can you do that? So maybe the first, the, your first try, yes, you got five heads and five tail. Can you pick up the same coin and then do this again? Can you always get five head and five tail? I ask this question many, many times. Most of the time, people say no, that is not going to happen. Uh, 
by the law of large number set as long as the number of flips is big enough. So let's say as long as this number is big enough, how long there is the study that I used in the past that shows that as the number of flip past 60, the number of heads and number of tail, they are really close to 50-50. So if you flip a coin 60 times, as long as the end is big enough, you flip that so many times, the sample size increases and increases, right? So maybe you get exactly 30 head and then exactly 30 tail. But you might say, all right, um, that is, I don't think that is going to happen. So how about this? Maybe you get 29 heads and then 31 tail. Maybe you get a 20, you get a 32 head and then a 28 tail. But what I am trying to say is out of six out of 60 flips, the probability is very close to 50%, 50%, as long as the number of times is big enough. So that is the law of large number. All right. Now let me say one more thing because before I, I end this video. So back to the marble problem. So back to the marble problem. You look at these um, three probabilities right there. What do you see? The probability is in fraction, right? 4 over 10, 1 over 10, and 5 over 10. So if you take 4 over 10, 4 over 10, 1 over 10, and 5 over 10, you do a, this is a point 0.4, right? This is a point this is a point 10 and then this is a point 5. You see that they are all between 0 and 1. 0 means 0 percent, 1 means 100 percent. So that means when you write a probability using fractions, the numerator is always less than or equal to the denominator. So let's write a, a couple fraction that can be used as a probability. So we got three right here, right? So how about nine over 10? That is fine, right? It's between zero and one. 10 over 10, that is good. Uh, 99 divided by 100, that is good. Uh, how about two over three? That is good. How about one over a, a, a thousand? That is good. They are all between zero and one. How about this one? How about 11 over 10? Uh-uh. When you take 11 divided by 10, that is greater than 1. So this one, no. Um, how about 12 over 11? No. 12 divided by 11 is greater than 1. How about negative 2 divided by 6? No. Probability can never be negative. Uh, how about 2,000 divided by 3,000? Yes. 2,000 is less than or equal to 3,000. So that is between 0 and 1. So this one is fine. So when you write a probability, check your work. You do a problem, right? Check your work. If your answer is greater than 100%, that is totally wrong. Okay. So you do some a few lines of work, but at the end of the day, you got a number that is greater than 100%. Do you think you will get credits for that? The answer is no. You are telling me probability is greater than 100%. When you say that, when you circle that as your final answer, that means you don't even understand what probability is. Right? So probability, again, is always between 0% and 100%. When you write fractions, probability in fractions, be careful. The numerator must be less than or equal to the denominator. So let me give you one more example. Is this a probability? Yes, 3 divided by 3 is 1. 1 means 100%. Is this a probability? Yes, 10 divided by 10 is 100%. Uh, is this a probability? 9 divided by 9 is 100%. One more. Is this a probability? Yes, 0 divided by 5 is uh, zero. Zero means that it's impossible to happen. Back to our marble problem. So we have blue, right? And then yellow and the red. So now I am going to reach my hand inside the box and then try to draw another ball out. I am I going to get a ball that is silver? We have blue, we have yellow, we have red. You are trying to take one ball out. Can you get a silver ball? The answer is no. How do you write such probability? There is no silver ball, so you have 0 divided by 10. Then that is impossible to happen. There is no, z there is no silver. You try to grab one out, you want the silver? That is impossible. All right, so that is the end of this part. In the next part, I will show you the statistical experiment, event, simple event, and sample space. If you think this instruction is helpful, please like, subscribe, and share the video out for me. I appreciate your help really, really much. Signing out.